All right, everyone. So welcome to this week's Sycamore Family Friday webinar. My name is Madeline Sadig, and I'm the Associate Director of Student Orientation. And I am super excited to have Caroline Blower with me today, um, who's an Assistant Director of the Student Counseling Center. Um, the Sycamore Family Friday webinar series is a monthly, typically, webinar series where we talk about topics that are popular within the Sycamore Family community and things that you need to know to support your student. So I'll hand it off to Caroline, um, but what we'll do is she'll go through her presentation, and then shortly after, we'll move into a Q&A series. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A, and once she's finished, we will get started. So Caroline, take it away. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, like was said, my name is Caroline. I'm the Assistant Director at the Student Counseling Center here at ISU. If you didn't know, there is a Student Counseling Center here at ISU on campus. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you all about our services, how students can get involved in services and some of the different opportunities and options we have. Um, so I will just get right into it. So first, it's always nice to mention a, mi a mission, which we do have a mission statement. Um, which the gist of it is, um, we're here to help students become the person they want to be um, and maintain their wellness, including mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, all of the above. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways. Um, but there's a lot of research out there that lets us know that when we are taking care of ourselves and we're in a better mental, emotional place, we are a lot more successful academically in our careers. So that's sort of the idea of having um, mental health resources here on campus is just to help students be um, as successful as they can be. So we offer a variety of services. Um, our most common one and the one that people are usually most interested in would be our individual counseling. So that's a one on one therapy appointment with a counselor here at our office. Um, most students, that's what they're looking for. Um, but we have more than that. We also provide group counseling opportunities and every semester, the groups we offer differs depending on the different counselors and interns interests and the kind of topics they wanna to have groups on. Um, so we always have some really interesting and cool groups happening. Um, we also do provide couples counseling. Um, the only kind of little caveat is that both uh, clients have to be ISU students. So it couldn't be um, an ISU student and one of their partners you know, outside of campus, they'd have to also be a student. We also provide crisis intervention services. And when I say that, that essentially means supporting students through a crisis. And crisis can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Um, but typically what we mean is a student who needs to be seen right away, needs to get in, is going through a situation that um, is causing enough distress that they are potentially unsafe or um, may not be able to make safe decisions. Um, we also do have a after hours on call protocol in our partnership with ISU um, PD. So there is a way for students to get in touch with an on call counselor if they're in an emergency in the evening, nighttime or holidays, even when campus is closed. I think that's important to know. A lot of people don't know about that. Um, we also provide testing. And when I say testing, I'm talking about psychological testing. So for instance, um, students who may deal with different learning disabilities, ADHD, ADD, um, different personality issues, um, something that would require documentation for diagnosis or accommodations, we do provide those types of assessments here, which is really really helpful in an academic setting. And additionally, I will say they will never have access to any of these services, especially testing services for cheaper the rest of their lives. Um, we are definitely the most affordable option when it comes to those types of services. Um, we also provide what's called case management. Um, and a good way to explain case management is sort of like a step down from clinical therapy services. So that would be focusing on things like time management, life skills, um, job skills, social skills, um, basically helping someone just function better, especially in this age range that we typically work with. It's all brand new. They've never really had to be an adult before. It's a lot to learn. Um, so those services are actually um, done by our Bachelors of Social Work interns. 
and they meet with students to address those kinds of concerns. And that can be in addition to individual or group therapy. So it's a really nice supplemental service that we provide. Um, we end up doing quite a few case management referrals, which is really awesome. I'm really glad we're able to do that. Um, we're also extremely fortunate to have a psychiatrist contracted with us. Um, and a psychiatrist is a medical doctor who can prescribe medications. Um, so Dr. Parvaz has worked with us for many years. He's a, a local psychiatrist, um, a really wonderful physician. And he's in the office on Wednesdays, only one day a week. Um, so that is the day that students who may need medicine in addition to other services here can get that. Um, and that goes to their pharmacy. The medicine gets covered by insurance if they have it. And if they don't, we usually try to find ways to help students still get their medicine if they need that. Um, so that is really awesome that we're able to provide that on campus. Um, he's just a wonderful doctor and we really love having him. And then another service that we have that a lot of people don't really know about is, is something called consultation. And consultation is sort of like um, you don't necessarily want to have a therapy appointment, but you need to talk to somebody or you're having sort of a situational problem you need some advice on, or even maybe a student is concerned about a friend and they don't know what to do about it. So they want to talk to someone here to figure out how to help them. Um, it's really helpful to schedule students for consults. Um, when they may be kind of anxious to actually come in for an intake or a triage appointment to get started with therapy. And so we'll schedule them for a consult instead, which is usually pretty casual, laid back. And then from there, they can kind of decide if they want to move forward with services. Um, it's a pretty cool option too that students don't know about. Um, and it kind of helps um, ease people in if they maybe have some nerves or uncertainty about getting therapy. So reasons for services. Um, basically, whatever's out there, we deal with. Um, a lot of times, our particular office, which is sort of different than other campuses, counseling centers, I think, um, we end up sort of operating like a mini um, community mental health center because we do deal with a variety of issues from low severity to high severity. Um, including things as you know, common as adjustment or homesickness, which is super common, especially in freshman students who are away from home for the first time and just need some support getting through that change. Just the stress of academics, time management, different life changes. But we also deal with um, clinical disorders like depression, anxiety, ADHD, trauma disorders, and bipolar, and occasionally some uh, psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. We have had students deal with those types of things um, and we are able to help them and guide them to what they need depending on their situation. We do offer um, services for mild to moderate substance use issues. And the reason we say mild to moderate is because sometimes it's a, if it's a severe substance use issue, then that is um, encroaching on, you know, medical issues and it, they may need to be in a more intense setting for safety and health reasons. Um, and, you know, we do often deal with students dealing with some sort of suicidal ideation or self-harming behaviors. So um, that's why we have and more dot, 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 because we really do cover it all and everything in between. Um, my, our director says there's nothing we haven't seen. And then we always say, please don't say that because that will be the time that something we haven't seen pops up. But we have a great team who's really well equipped to handle a lot of different issues that students could be coming in with. Another really cool um, aspect of the Counseling Center is our outreach and training. So when I say outreach, I mean exactly what I'm doing right now, which is reaching out to the community or uh, Sycamore family members um, to talk about mental health issues, talk about our services, whatever the case may be. Oftentimes we are asked to come to different campus events um, to talk about sometimes specific topics in mental health that we get requested, um, like anxiety, test anxiety, um, stress management, time management, lots of different topics we help with. Um, and then things like this, where we're on a panel, different types of things like that. We really enjoy being able to 
um, advocate for mental health in general and especially to the students and community here at ISU. Um, and then we are a training facility. So one of our bigger functions that we do is train future uh, clinicians and providers. So we, I think we have a total of 20 interns this year in training to become psychologists, um, clinical social workers, mental health counselors, different disciplines. So um, I always like to mention, especially if any of you um, have students who are interested in the the mental health field as a career, and maybe they end up getting, uh, wanting to pursue graduate degree in psychology, social work, counseling, something like that. We are an excellent training facility. We have a lot of interns and uh, not to toot our own horn, but we're pretty stinking good at it. Um, in fact, we're so good at it that we hire them. I was a trainee um, at the counseling center when I was in graduate school and I came back. I loved it so much. So we have a really great training program and um, I always like to mention that because even if some people aren't necessarily interested in getting services, that doesn't mean they can't um, still be engaged with the counseling center, which is really cool. So listed here are just some of the programs that we've worked with so far as far as um, having interns from, but we're hoping to expand that and maybe connect with other schools as well to um, bring in more diverse and cool trainees that will someday be therapists and social workers, which is a really neat aspect of what we do. So sometimes uh, the scariest part of going to therapy is just how to get started. So I'm going to break it down for you as simple as I can with how we go about doing that at the Student Counseling Center. So the first thing that will happen is the student will need to either call or walk in to set up what's called a triage appointment. And a triage appointment is a brief um, assessment, usually 15 to 20 minutes to get a really general overview of what's going on with the student. And from that triage assessment, we kind of have an idea of, okay, they need this level of service and this is the type of counselor they'd be good with. They go on our wait list. And then while they're on that wait list, they get matched. Um, the wait time varies. We prioritize by need. So if we have a student come in who's potentially a safety risk, or they have some really severe stuff going on, they get priority um, over the lower level issues. Um, but we do eventually get everyone in. And I'd say compared to places in the community and other places I've heard of, our wait time is considerably shorter. Um, it's very hard to get into mental health services right now, which is really unfortunate. Um, so once they have their triage and they're added to the wait list and they get matched, then they're scheduled for an intake appointment, which is a full hour long um, assessment where they will meet with their counselor that they're supposed to be meeting with ongoing and get an idea of what's going on with them, potentially be diagnosed if they meet criteria for something and start working on a, a plan for treatment together. Um, that's, that's in a nutshell how it goes. Um, not all of our services require this. Some of our services like groups are just open. They don't necessarily have to have a triage or an intake to get involved with those. But for individual counseling, which is what most students are interested in, this is the process. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about this process if they come up because it can be a, a little confusing and intimidating. Um, but I will move on to cost. One of the biggest questions we get is how much does it cost? Um, so we work very, very hard to keep our cost for services as low as possible. Um, so we have fees based on number of appointments. So the first three appointments are completely free. So they will not get charged um, for the first three appointments they attend. And then once they have had um, four, so once they've had their fourth appointment after the three free appointments, they are charged $30. And then if they get to seven appointments, then they're charged another $30. And that is the max they'll be charged um, for individual counseling um, for that academic year. So the max they're charged, unless they have any additional services like testing um, or certain groups sometimes have a fee associated with them, usually a very low fee just to help um, pay for supplies. Um, the most they will get charged, unless they do extra services, is $60 an academic year. Um, 
I, I do think it's really important to mention that there are times where even, you know, 30 to $60 is really hard on a student. Um, so in those situations, we have a way to work with them to waive that fee if we need to. And that's something we do if the student needs it and that is okay. Um, like I said, there are some things that may cost extra like testing or certain groups, um, but most students, the most they pay is $60 and that includes all therapy sessions, most group appointments if they attend group, and psychiatry. So if they end up working with a psychiatrist, there's no additional fee to seeing the doctor in addition to seeing a counselor, um, which is significantly cheaper, you know, than any copay you'll have even billing insurance with a private counselor or community mental health. Um, the cost of mental health out there is, is really high, so we're really glad that we're able to provide it at this cost. We do offer um, services through the break. So we have um, services over the summer break, um, which is really great. Some students opt not to because they just wanna go home and have a break, some do. Um, and what's also really cool is that we can do telehealth as long as they're in the state of Indiana. And in the summer, um, they get three free appointments again. And then after that, another $30 if they opt to do summer appointments. And we see students through the winter break while the university is open. Um, so we, we're here all the time. Uh, we don't really stop seeing people, even on the breaks. That's about it as far as cost. And then just some FYI. So um, the way we bill, we are never sending uh, like a paper bill through the mail like you get from the doctor's office. Um, typically. Um, we send it via their ISU student portal. So it gets added to the bill um, that they already have for tuition and all the other costs they have for being a student. And I can't remember the exact wording as to how it shows up on their um, ISU bill, but I think it's something along the lines of wellness fee or wellness something or other. Um, so it doesn't indicate therapy or counseling. Um, it doesn't say anything that would breach confidentiality because we are a confidential service. Um, so another important point to that is because we're a confidential service and most of our clients are 18 and older, um, we don't have to tell family members if students are engaged in our services. It is completely private and confidential unless um, the student signs a release of information and they want there to be some communication between um, our office and their family, which sometimes does happen. Um, just kind of depends on the situation. Um, and for telehealth services, we are able to do that. Um, we utilize secure Zoom to be able to provide teleservices. So some really good examples of when this happens is if a student goes home for the summer or maybe they're on internship or something like that. I have several students over the years who've been education majors. Um, and that year of student teaching, they, they wouldn't be able to make it in time to the office, even if they were at a school here in Terre Haute, to make it in time for a counseling appointment by you know 5 p.m. because they're in school all day. So it's convenient because we can just do tele and they can step out of the school. And sometimes they sit in their car. We've had some interesting tele session locations, as long as they're not driving. Okay, that's the one rule. Please don't be driving while you're having therapy. Um, that sounds dangerous and is dangerous but that's a really cool service that we offer as well. Still confidential, um, build the same way, um, just have to be in the state of Indiana. That is all of the general, um, in a nutshell, information about the Student Counseling Center and our services. I have our information here. We are located in Gillum Hall on the second floor. We're right next to the recently uh, updated and renovated Dreiser building. So if you know where that is, we're right next to that. And we have the whole second floor and our phone number is pretty easy to remember, 812-237-3939. So um, if you have questions or anything like that, we, we are here. All right, everybody. So if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask them. So um, feel free to put them in the chat. Amy, I see you've raised your hand. You are welcome to unmute. I'm not sure, actually, maybe I have to. I can um, unmute you if that's what you'd like, or you can put it in the chat, or excuse me, the Q&A. So I'll just go ahead and allow you to talk if you'd like. 
There we go. Can awesome. you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Um, just a simple question. I understood the part about psychiatric services. Will do. Mm -hmm. So, will that person be able to provide med checks? Like, my daughter's on ADHD medication, and of course, there have to be, you know, regular med checks to continue to have that particular prescription. Yeah. So, um, to get the prescription, um, they have on ongoing appointments with the psychiatrist here. So, if they opt to maybe just for convenience sake, see our doctor here while they're at school, then they would continue to see Dr. Parvaz, uh, depending on how often he says, usually it ends up being like uh, once every three months, every so many weeks, it kind of depends on the prescription and, and, the, and the student. Um, but yes, that would be an ongoing service, not, not just a one-time appointment. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anyone else have any questions about anything? We are happy to answer your questions. Yes, we are. I'm gonna pull some questions from the registration. So okay. you add anything while I pull those questions and that's totally fine. Um, off the top of my head, nothing, nothing's popping up end of the day on Friday, head empty, no thoughts. Um, but um, sometimes they come to me, you know, I have sparks of inspiration. Um, nothing right now, but happy to answer. my recording. So um, I've got a question pulled from the registration. So are resources available for students that need academic monitoring slash accountability? Um, so as far as the student counseling center services go, that ends up being oftentimes a huge focus of our work with students because most of them are full-time students. So um, a lot of times we are helping them monitor, you know, we're checking in a lot in our appointments, like, hey, how's it going? Are you making it to class? Having any issues? Trying to help them problem solve if they are struggling academically. Um, as far as like purely academic, um, we don't do that as much. However, there are several um, departments here on campus who offer mentoring, who offer lots of different services and guidance um, and one-on-one -on -one attention for students who need that, uh, you know, accountability, who need that extra support. It kind of just depends on where they fall and what they need. But we often end up focusing on helping them maintain their academics as part of their whole wellness um, with their mental health services. Just to review, um, someone had a question about the cost. And so um, they said, if you want to just review this, um, they said, what is the cost of coming to the counseling center? And if it is not affordable, affordable can a student still come? Um, the typical maximum cost for academic year is $60 total, all appointments included. And that comes out in their ISU portal account. They don't get a bill for it. Um, we don't go to debt collectors, right? We're not, that's not how we do things. Um, and if $60 an academic year is an undue burden to a student, if that causes extreme stress, if they are having financial hardship, absolutely, that will never be a deterrent from them getting services with us. And um, just to review a couple of things, I've seen a couple of questions in the registrations about um, accommodations. Um, and so we obviously, we of course have an 
Accessibility Resource Office. And so if you have any questions about that, you can search on Indiana State's website, Accessibility, and they um, will have all the information provided on there for you to get set up with that. And that is related to the IEPs from high school and all that kind of stuff as well. Right. And we end up helping a lot with that too. Um, I frequently am filling out accommodations paperwork um, for my clients um, for lots of different things, including extensions for test time, um, additional support in the classroom, and that it varies. Um, it kind of depends on the professor and what they can offer. Um, sometimes it includes um, special um, accommodation in the classroom for different um, tools to be used. So we work with several, um, many students who um, are on the autism spectrum. And so sometimes they need need to have more flexibility in the types of things they can bring into class, you know, wearing headphones to help not become overstimulated, or if somebody is anxious or has ADHD and they need to fidget, being able to make sure they have access to those things. And um, professors recognize that it's it's not a disturbance, it's just what they need to do. Um, we also can assist with, um, if the student qualifies for it, um, um, emotional support animals um, that if they live on campus, that still goes through um, the accessibility resource office and res life. So they have to kind of collaborate to get those approvals, but those are all things that we also can help with. Awesome. So we got a question in the chat. So what are the hours of operation? Are there 24 hour accommodations? So we do not have 24 hour appointments. Um, our office hours are typical ISU office hours, Monday through Friday. Um, we're eight to five. The university is eight to four thirty, but everyone's mostly here till five. You know, um, so we're eight to five. Our last appointments we usually take are at four p.m. Um, so we're wrapping up with our last sessions by five, um, like most um, offices. Now, as far as twenty-four hour access, if a student is in a crisis situation in the evening time when we're closed over a weekend or during a holiday, um, they can connect with ISU police here on campus and be connected with one of our staff members who is on call at that time. And they can get some phone consultation. Um, depending on the situation, the recommendation from that phone call may be, okay, you just needed to talk this out. You're okay now. If you need anything, come by our office. Sometimes it's, hey, I really would like to check in with you on, in person. Could you come in Monday morning or Tuesday or whatever the case may be to get started with services? And then in some rare occasions, um, it results in a student being recommended to be hospitalized. Um, that does happen sometimes. And ISUPD um, is usually really good about um, getting them where they need to go and explaining that process. Um, a lot of times we're able just to talk a student through it and they end up being okay and decide to come see us at a later time. Um, but as far as being able to schedule an appointment 24 seven, no, but if it's an emergency situation and potentially a safety concern because of mental health, um, we do have a protocol in place on campus to get students connected with the counselor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I saw a question in the reservation, excuse me, um, the registrations that I would like to kind of touch on a little bit, uh, because it asks about what resources do you provide to new students transitioning from high school to college and life at Terre Haute? And so as far as the residence halls go, if that's something maybe you're talking about, um, they, we of course have RAs on duty um, all the time that a student can call if they're having issue, kind of that first line of communication like Caroline was mentioning of calling ISU police if you are having a mental health crisis or any crisis on campus outside of those business hours, I would encourage you to call ISU police first um, and then maybe uh, an RA on duty or an RA on duty first if that's the most comfortable. Um, those are some of the things that I would encourage if, if you're talking about like those 24-hour resources. And um, we also have in those first three to six weeks, we have state welcome, which will consist of some of the traditions we have and also just events to keep students busy on campus while they're adjusting, um, such as like, you know, roller skating and like fun activities like that on the weekends and during the week. Um, and then of course we have like 
support sports and football games to keep them busy. Um, some other resources that we provide are in, again, for the residence halls, um, for in, in the halls. Um, we have some events that go on inside of the buildings that are organized by the RAs and the residence hall association. Um, and so one of the things that I would say that most people would encourage um, and I don't want to speak on behalf of Caroline specifically, but a lot of people would encourage your student to get involved really quickly because that does help with the transition tremendously. Just getting on involved on campus, finding their people, finding your group of students that they feel connected to is a huge part in making them feel like they're a part of campus in their transition as well. Um, one of the things that our Dean of Students would often say um, is that, you know, if your student seems distant from you, sometimes it's because they are, of course, learning and like having a good time on campus. But other times, you know, it could be that your student isn't isn't adjusting well. And that's when it's time to have that conversation either um, by filling out a Sycamore's Care form. And the Sycamore's Care form can be found on the Indiana State website. And that form basically entails um, a conversation that can be started um, with a professional staff member, faculty member on campus um, with your student. And that can be filled out anonymously. So if you are texting your student and you have this gut feeling, but maybe they're not um, adjusting well, you can fill out that form and uh, the Dean of Students Office will get your student connected with the people that they need to get connected with in order to make sure that they are feeling um, welcomed on campus and feeling connected to campus. Um, so the resources are, it's a myriad of resources, um, but it's just important to remember that it is a transition, like you detailed in your question. You know, transitions are, are going to be difficult and they're not always going to be smooth, um, but we provide you with the tools to be academically successful and we encourage you to engage with resources we have on campus, like events, organizations, getting involved with their major by joining a major specific organization, things like that. So uh, Caroline, do you wanna add anything on that front as well? Um, from a student counseling center standpoint, we are unique um, familiar with adjustment and transition issues. That is oftentimes um, a primary reason a student presents to our office um, is just the difficulty of adjustment. And we are often, especially in the summer, we're usually present at new student orientation in different ways to kind of help get the word out there. We have a lot of different materials on things to do in Terre Haute. Um, you know, we have a really holistic approach to treatment. So, you know, we're not just addressing a mental disorder, we're helping the person globally in their life. Um, so we recognize the importance of getting involved. So we are pretty knowledgeable about the different options here on campus too. Um, so we we know it's a hard time. And uh, that's why we're a lot of times at these types of family panels and events too, because it's hard on the families as well. Um, so we go to those events, market our services, and even if a student doesn't wanna to come to us, sometimes we will be asked to talk about homesickness transitions at new student orientation or at um, a first chapter meeting of a organization. So we're, we're out there trying to help students with that adjustment. And um, like was said, uh, the whole campus really is. Um, we all know how that goes and it's pretty typical. We are used to it. Yes, very used to it. And the other thing I was going to say too, Caroline mentioned like attending the events we have on campus in those first few weeks. Um, we also have a resource fair. That is, um, I believe normally the day before classes begin or the weekend before classes begin um, when we're doing that state welcome weekend. Um, and those resource fairs have in over a hundred organizations, um, campus resources, offices on campus that provide ton of information about what they do or who they serve or what they do on campus as an organization. So um, there are a plenty of opportunity for your student to, to come out and learn a little bit. And actually the resource fair is um, pretty much required for freshmen um, because it's part of the state welcome and their leader will walk them to that resource fair at the state welcome on the week before classes start too. So are there any other questions? I know we've had a couple of people hop off. I'm just searching through to make sure we answer all of the questions in the registrations. So someone asked in the registration about um, finding guidance on where, excuse me, finding guidance on how to select a major. Now I know this is 
a little bit of a couple different areas, but if you want to touch on that at all, you can. Um, yes. So uh, that is definitely something we can help with because, you know, an 18, 19 year old, 20 year old person, they're still figuring themselves out. Um, and we're, we're pretty used to seeing students go through different majors and try on different things. And something um, as clinicians we do is we try to help people identify their values and the lifestyle they want. And that's really important. And the kind of major you should pick. So that's definitely something we help our clients with all the time. Additionally, there are some services I know at the Career Center, um, as far as some like aptitude testing and, and um, things to do to kind of assess for different skill sets and interests. And we can also help with that as well. Um, but I think uh, in my experience, students get extremely caught up on picking the perfect right major. Um, and a lot of times, uh, there's just no such thing. It's more about picking what feels right at that time. And then down the road, you're like, actually, I'm interested in this. You can learn that too. Um, so I, my recommendation is always what feels right right now. And what kind of person do you feel like right now? What kind of person do you think you'll be? And we'll go with that. But we got to be flexible because we're growing and we're developing. So we can't get, can't get too bogged down with picking the, the perfect one. Awesome. Well, it looks like um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the Q&A section, but otherwise um, I'm going to solve for a few moments um, to make sure that we've gotten all those questions answered. Um, so Caroline, do you have any parting words for this evening? Um, definitely, um, if there are any family members here who have a current student, um, and if you've noticed anything that makes you worried for your student, um, noticing changes in their mood, behavior outside of the kind of typical, they're in college, they're tired or they're busy, you know, um, and you're just not quite sure what to do about that, you can call us too, right? So you can give us a call um, and we can talk you through that as well. Um, even if we can't say if they're a client or not, we can still say, well, in general, what we would recommend is X, Y, and Z to help that student. Um, so we're here to help um, families as well and as much as we can um, and if you think your student would benefit from some mental health services like I said you will never find it cheaper and more accessible in your life so um, now is the time to do it All right, sorry about that, I was typing an answer. So thank you so much, Caroline, for being on here. Um, I will um, stop the recording, but thank you guys so much for being on here. Um, and we appreciate you joining us this evening. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me um, via email, like I've emailed a couple of times through Zoom and stuff. So feel free to reach out and we can get any questions answered from you, but thank you so much.